Hi, I'm Mina Caputo, and you're watching Loud TV, motherfuckers. We were offered, um, you know, a couple of labels, uh, offered some really good deals. Um, we weren't really looking to make a record, not right now anyway. We were just enjoying being out there in the world and catching up on a lot of lost time that we missed with uh, one another. And, you know, I, I've been through some changes the past 10 years. All the boys had children. Um, I've done, you know, you know, we, we do all different kinds of creative things. Alan's got his, his coloring books that, you know, are on top of the world right now, his, his, his comic books. Um, you know, I'm doing my solo music and different musical projects and, um, and we were all doing live gigs, you know, and, and, um, we really enjoyed you know, this time around, the past few years, we're having a great time, a lot of fun. We've hired many people. We keep it really, really small now, just really very close with the band. And, uh, you know, we got some offers, and we were just... When we, we started getting some offers, we started kicking around some ideas, and one thing led to another, and a year and change later, a place where there's no more pain was, was born. I think the motivation really um, was to make up from lost time, you know? I mean, I could only, I could just say that personally. For me, it was the album to make amends with my brothers, with my family, for all the trouble I've caused them throughout all the years. So, for me, that's, the heart of it like and plus I, I i i love the band i love the songs that they write i love singing for them and being with them and they're my biggest allies and my my biggest friends and we're enjoying each other's company more than we ever have in our life so why not take advantage of you know really good times and and while it lasts because life Life is fleeting, life goes by so quick that, you know, I believe there's a certain amount of youth and inner, you know, we're all born with this inner child. We all have it. I don't care how old you become, we all have that inner child within us and that's what keeps us young, that's what keeps us creative. And um, it's something I try to preserve in my life. I try to preserve the child within me. It felt great. I, it, it was my, I had the, the best time, the most creative time laying down vocals and melodies than I ever have for this band. This was this was the fiercest I've ever been, the the um the most deliberate. I had a had an amazing, amazing time creating and and helping to bring the songs to the point where they needed to be, you know? I love that's my life. That's my passion. I'd, r I'd rather stay in a studio, in a recording studio, than anything else. You know, if I didn't have to go out on the road to, to take care of my family and my, my dog, and I'd, probably, and, I, and I'd probably stay in the studio making records every year. Because that's where my true passion is. It's in the studio. It's, it's being a doctor, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, it's giving birth to songs and, and melody and lyric that become soundtracks to people's lives.
I love the studio. The studio is like, is sometimes better than sex for me. You know, the 90s was a big time for all of us. And we were a part of that music scene. And all those bands from the 90s were very influential on Life of Agony. And, you know, I'm, a very, I'm very big on classic rock and roll. You know, Led Zeppelin, Queen, Pink Floyd. And then when the 90s hit, I, you know, I loved Radiohead. I loved, I loved Pearl Jam, Alice in Chains, Stone Temple Pilots, you know, Mother Love Bone, Oak Soundgarden, all those bands started. Um, you know, I learned a lot from them. So you can hear it in my work. And I'm not, and I'm not ashamed. You know, this is, this is what we do. Is is rock and roll? Is really we we all borrow from one another. Originality doesn't exist. You know, it's it's uh, it's how well you could steal. Everyone takes influence from everyone. When you really listen carefully to the Stone Temple Pilots, to me, they're just. Another, uh, 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 I don't want to say a more evolved version of Led Zeppelin, but they're very Led Zeppelin to me. If there was a very Led Zeppelin band of the 90s, it was the Stone Temple Pilots with a very eccentric Scott Weiland. That's what made them not sound like Led Zeppelin. But if you put Robert Plant in the Stone Temple Pilots, you're going to get some real fucking cool Zeppelin songs, you know what I mean? Because the DeLeo brothers, they were big fans of Page, and I can, I can hear it. I can hear the way DeLeo played, the, you know, Robert, the bass player, plays just like John Paul Jones. Eric Kretz got that John Bonham backbeat, and Dean DeLeo's got that uh, Jimmy Page kind of very open tuning rock and roll approach to guitar playing. So ev my point is that everybody that my point is that everybody borrows from one another. Look at the Oasis, you know, they're, you know, they're very John Lennon, they're very Beatles. We all are very Beatles. We all go back to the Beatles, you know what I mean? Of course, the producer's amazing. We love Matt Brown. He was in a pale horse named Death. And Matt Brown's been a friend of the band for 25 years, man. So if there was anyone, we wanted to bring in someone close, a, f a family person. We weren't, we weren't interested in bringing some big name producer. We don't really give a fuck. We don't care about that bullshit. We're not into flash, you know? We like guts and blood and, and you know, we don't, we're not interested in, oh, let's go get, uh, you know, I don't know. Even though Brendan O'Brien, he's an amazing producer, and I would love to work with him, but for this band, it's different. I, I wouldn't, okay. You can call it pessimism, but I think contrast is a better word. Contrast meaning, uh, you know, the yin and the yang of life. And that's what Life of Agony always really discussed was the yin and the yang, you know, the night and the day, the dark and the light, you know, the good and the bad, you know, um, that's life, you know, life gives you contrast and it all depends on how you react to that negativity because negativity does exist. It's, it's what you do with it. It's how you learn from it. And the way we learn is we songwrite, you know? And we heal each other in the process and we, we heal the, the listener, we heal the fans. You know, we heal the, peop we heal the people that, that love the band, you know? Absolutely. Yeah, I'm out living my life the way I always intended it to be, but couldn't 
didn't have the strength or the courage to to let the lady out you know what I mean and um, but now that I have and I'm, I'm almost I'm transitioning almost 10 years now so um, yeah I became an old lady real fast <laughs> it's a cruel world but uh, I'm not gonna let the cruel world stop me from being me I don't give a fuck who likes it who doesn't I'm not here to police people if you don't understand I say fuck off I don't care if you don't if you if you don't like people like me or whatever you don't understand it it's because you can't look deep within your own self you know those are usually the people that that dislike people that follow their dreams I'm just going after my dreams you know one dream after the other I'm living it and that's the purpose of my life I live my dreams and and one of my dreams was to honor the feminine and I'm just a woman born without a uterus you know I don't have the tools you know I don't have the physical down there to give birth that's all I'm no different than any other girl on the street in, in my in my personal view if you really knew who I was intimately you know I think people would say the same really you know yeah, since I'm six seven years old maybe I always knew I was just afraid I mean I grew up I grew up in the 70s in the 80s so back then it was very very different than it is now so yeah but I don't I, I you know that that's part of the point like I don't I'm not like everybody and I, I had to you know the more you walk into your fear the easier life becomes because then you realize fear doesn't even exist it's a charade it's a game the institutions play with us all the institutions set into place for humanity creates fear and that's why they got everybody running around like like sheep and slaves because everyone's afraid so um, yeah I'm not afraid anymore I don't give a fuck I don't care what you think, what you say, just don't touch me. Because then, yeah, I'll get Brooklyn on you. And I might have to like, you know, I don't know, stab you in the fucking neck, you know? Because if someone tries to harm my life, I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to protect my life. You know, that's the, or protect one of my friends or, you know, I'm still an angry, violent person. I'm fucking very angry, you know. From what? Ah. From our society? Yeah, or? society. You can be yourself, but not like that. You know, that's society. Very hypocritical, very fear-based, um, and very uh, counterproductive. And the institution set into place for humanity. The school system, the healthcare system, the food systems, the political systems. They, all, they should all be ashamed of themselves. They all should be ashamed of themselves. They're all big fuck-ups. It's fucking humanity, man. Humanity's taken some weird fucking turn, man, you know? But I don't know if that's the way it's supposed to be, you know? Are we supposed to destroy ourselves? You know, I don't know. No one knows nothing. I don't care who you are. You're the fucking Pope or you're Stephen Hawkins. No one knows shit. No one knows the origin of life. No one knows why we're here. But you need to create why you're here. We're here to, to have fun. We're here to feel good. We're here to give each other unconditional love and encouragement. We're here to protect one another. But 
the way like the institutions are, unfortunately, they don't teach that. And we're gonna we're gonna tour all year long, you know. Not overwork, not overwork it because we don't we don't do two hundred nights out of the year anymore because we don't really want to. Uh, but um, just lots of touring, you know, and we'll see. We'll see how the record, how the world reacts to the record, and that's going to dictate, you know, certain decisions that the band makes for the future. What are you Maybe I'll quit, and there won't be any future. <laughs> Maybe I'll quit again. Yeah, fuck, cunt, bitch, <laughs> fuck, ah!